John Michael, that was a fantastic set. Uh, thank you so much for performing on Advocate Sessions today. Uh, I'm honored to be here amongst the cast of folks that you've had in here before. And um, uh, first off, I want to ask you um, uh, how you got started in songwriting. Um, pretty much, I did a stint with the Appalachian Mountain Club up in uh, the White Mountains in New Hampshire. I, actually, I was hiking the AT down from Mount Katahdin in Maine, and I got to the White Mountains, and I discovered this whole hut system and all these people working for the AMC that were like me. And I got stuck there. That's the, as far as I hiked. Um, and I was stuck there for eight years and uh, working for them. And one of the jobs I had was caretaking a winter hut, Zealand Falls hut. Uh, people would ski in six miles to it. And it was a real crappy winter, so the snow was awful. So the, very few people came to see me that winter. So I had my guitar there. I'd get up every morning, go through my routine, which meant sweep the hut even if nobody was there make my coffee and sit down and play guitar for about four hours straight you know every day and that's what pretty much got me going and so I wrote a few songs there and then um, and then believe it or not after 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 eight years I sort of went crazy being in this Shangri-La and I felt this other urge pulling on me to go be part of uh, the worthwhile world and so I left there and came down to the valley and, st and I had a, uh, a psychology degree, which was, you know, that and 10 cents will get you a cup of coffee back then. Um, but, but I started working with the um, mental health population. I was, I was, I was, a, I called myself a street therapist, actually. Um, and once I started doing that, and then the next thing you know, I'm married, and the next thing you know, I got two kids, Sarah Lise and Walker. Um, the, the whole music thing kind of dried up, which was sort of sad. Uh, and I didn't even realize it was happening. Uh, just too busy with other stuff. And I got a resurgence um, when my daughter was born in uh, 91. Uh, I went to a songwriting workshop over at Omega that Roseanne Cash was leading with her husband, Rodney Crowell. And their friend, uh, J.D. Smith, was there, which was kind of cool. And there were only 15 of us in the class. So we got a three-day weekend. It's all about songwriting, and that was like the biggest jolt I've ever gotten in my life. Um, so I started writing then again, um, and then the third boost was when I retired like four years ago. I know I look like a young gentleman, but I, uh, I've got some years under my belt. Wait, I've got no belt on. Uh, so, well, no, to be honest, uh, to answer your question fully, when Obama was inaugurated, I, I wrote a song called, um, yeah, that one. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And I said, what do I do with this song? I love this song. Uh, the title will come to me in a minute. And my daughter said, well, duh, Dad, put it on YouTube. And I was like, well, what's YouTube? I didn't even know what YouTube was. Was that nine years ago? Um, and so once I started doing that, I just got this real weird feeling about, um, wow, this is sort of an audience, kind of an audience. And so I just started prolifically writing music. Um, I've got 200 of my own songs on YouTube now under Jamoof. It's a nickname, J-A-M-O-O-F. Um, and, you know, I, I play out in the valley, but somehow YouTube is my is the connection that keeps the songs coming, you know. And uh, who are some of your uh, biggest uh, influences on your songwriting? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Back when I was a kid in high school, my daddy brought home, he brought home Johnny Cash. And then one day, out of the blue, my old man discovered him before I did. He brought home John Prine's first album. I cannot believe that my dad discovered him before I did. And so early on, it was John Prine, Steve Goodman, listening to that stuff. Um, and then as I became wiser and more listened to more stuff, you know, every singer-songwriter out there who writes their own stuff has got something to say to me. When I go to open mics um, and listen to some of the folks that you know very well, and, and they're putting out a new song, 
I mean, some of them I'm just sitting there with tears running down my eyes, you know, and just shaking. And, and that's the inspiration, really, that keeps me going, I think, the most, for sure, that personal. And so um, uh, kind of going back to talking about YouTube, um, in, uh, you, you said you've written uh, 200 songs, uh, more than 200 songs. Yeah, yeah, probably 250 uh, or 275. How, how, many, how many songs are you... How many are any up? good? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, up, uh, basically how many uh, songs are you putting on YouTube on, like, monthly basis, weekly oh, basis? I had a... Uh, holy crap. And, and it, it really seems out of my control sometimes that uh, there was a period of time, let's say two years ago, maybe three years ago, two years ago, and it's it's died down now. Um, but every two weeks, I'd have a song on there. So like 24, 25 songs a year. Wow. And, uh, and, and truly, they seem to be writing themselves. I mean, I would get, you would, you would say something to me, you'd say a line, you know, like, um, I had never heard the expression before, unfuck yourself, right? I'd never heard that before. And as soon as I heard that, I knew there was a song in it, you know? And it's just, it's, it works just like that, that I'll hear one line, so oh, I better write that down, and go home, and that one line will sort of like be a seed that the whole plant grows from, that the whole song busts out of, when it works well. Mm -hmm. Lately, so I've been having to work at it. I'm like saying, what's going on? I gotta actually work at writing a song. This is no good. But, you know, whatever. Well, uh, thank you so much for performing on Advocate Sessions today. It was a great set. My pleasure. Thank you.